This is a recreation of my previous video on this subject, as I found in follow-up testing that I made a mistake. That said, the overall conclusions are unchanged, so if you've already seen the original video, feel free to skip this one. Is the algorithm going to punish me? Yes. Do I care? No. A common point of discussion around SC is what you should upgrade to increase performance. The most frequent answer is CPU, but is it really that simple? Recently, I upgraded my computer and took the opportunity to test SC in a variety of configurations to get a true answer. Let's cover our methodology. If you're not interested in the minutia, feel free to skip to the results chapter. For this test, we're using two CPUs and two GPUs, the Ryzen 3700X and 9800X 3D, and the RTX 3060 and RX 97XT respectively, giving us four possible combinations. In order to limit the variables to just these four things, a few considerations have been made. All components are running their stock out-of-the-box clocks, with the exception of RAM. As each CPU uses a different generation of memory, the speed and timings were altered to ensure both are running identically as possible. Now, Some may question this decision, as a new CPU usually means new RAM, however I felt that this choice was right, as upgrading within a platform, such as those staying on AM4, is very prevalent, and I want this to be as applicable to all scenarios as possible. If you're curious the impact faster memory has, see the video that just popped up in the cards. All systems will be using the same Samsung 990 EVO drives for both Windows and SC. The 3060 was running with driver 566.36, so avoid the uh, problems, with the 9070 XT running driver 25.3.1. DDU was run as necessary, at least this time it was done properly, that's kind of the reason I've had to re-record this video, and all of the firmware and drivers were the latest version. As for the benchmark I'm using, the game is set with all settings at high, with no upscaling enabled, to give us true performance figures. Benchmarking is done using MSI Afterburner with its built-in instance of Reva Tuna. No other software was running whilst benchmarking was done, and any GeForce and Adrenaline functionality was disabled. As already mentioned, the results for the 3700X and 9070XT were incorrect due to an error that I made. I did run the benchmarks again for all configurations and found that the other three systems were well within margin of error in their results, so those remain unchanged, but obviously the results for the 9070XT and 3700X have been updated. The loop used starts in the hubs of Area 18, walking to the hangars, taking a large ship, flying all the way and landing at the Stanton Gateway in Pyro. The reason for this particular loop was to cover as many parts of the game as I could whilst ensuring repeatability. This was done three times to get an average at 1080p, 1440p and 4K for each of the four configurations. So 36 trips to Pyro and back. This was a long video. Now for the part that you actually care about, the results. If at any point you want to read the charts, please pause the video. First starting with our average FPS values, we have our four configurations labelled across the bottom. Just upgrading the CPU, as many suggest, actually sees no impact at higher resolutions, but at 1080p does result in a notable increase. Just upgrading our GPU increases the FPS across the board, with 4K especially benefiting. Replacing both, naturally, results in the biggest increase. To better exemplify this, let's instead view these as percentage values over the baseline system. There are two things of interest to note here. The first is the massive 120% increase to our average FPS at 4K, which I suspect is more to do with VRAM. Whilst SC never managed to saturate the 12GB on the 3060, the near double bandwidth of the 9070XT at this more RAM heavy resolution makes a huge difference. The second is that by upgrading both the CPU and the GPU, we get a multiplicative effect, with 1080p and 1440p seeing four times the FPS versus just upgrading a single component. Now let's take a look at the effect on our 1% lows, what you will often experience as hitching. Upgrading our CPU alone sees massive increases here, with these values more than doubling. This is to be expected, as the main thread is often the cause of these hitches, and so increasing our CPU power alleviates this. Swapping just our GPU, however, does see improvements, but they are minimal. I should note that in the previous video, I saw a halving in these values, not an increase with this particular system, and that specifically is what prompted the retesting. 
That being said, these figures are far more logical. A small increase overall, but we're still being held back by the CPU. Upgrading the lot then sees improvements somewhere between the two as we push more work back towards the CPU. Naturally, this has smaller improvements the more CPU bound we would become. And for those who prefer, here they are as percentages, which shows just how impactful increasing CPU power really is, especially at 1440p and 4K. Finally, let's see the impact on our 0.1% lows. Upgrading the CPU, much as with the 1% lows, sees huge gains here, but if we swap only the GPU, the increased load that pushes now onto the CPU begins to rear its head, causing our 1% lows to suffer as a result. The story continues the same if we upgrade both components, with us suffering more, the more CPU bound we become. So what can we surmise from all of this? Well, first let's clear something up. If you have a clear bottleneck, say your GPU is only running at 50%, that will always indicate the best increase. But assuming all things are roughly equal, let's first consider the CPU. At 1080p, you will see both average FPS gains as well as a reduction in hitching, making this a clear choice for upgrade at this resolution. At higher resolutions, you won't see any increase in average FPS, but if your average frame rate is already pretty good, upgrading the CPU will help with those 1% lows. As for the GPU, this will result in an increase in average frame rates regardless of your resolution and at 4K especially, with newer cards offering higher memory bandwidth that makes a huge difference. However, this does come at the trade of your 1% lows. But the multiplicative effect of upgrading both the CPU and GPU is simply far too much to ignore. As such, if you have overall low frame rates, you cannot neglect one part of your PC for another. Now, I do want to be clear on something. These results do not mean everyone needs to go and get a 9800X3D and pair it with a mid-tier card. In fact, I wouldn't recommend my PC configuration at all. Unless, like me, you intend to have your CPU last for a couple of GPUs. If you have a 70 tier card, pair it with either the 9700X or the 14700K. Don't waste your money on something you're not going to be able to leverage. SC is never a good benchmark for PC performance. Any questions or thoughts, leave them below. And of course, make sure to check out the other videos in this mini-series. Thank you for watching. Catch y'all next time.